and welcome to Crud TV. <laughs> Natter is there, one of 111 bands featured in the brand new book by Ian Glasper called The Scene That Would Not Die. Uh, it's 20 years of post-millennial punk in the UK and Ian has been very kind enough to take some time out and speak to us about the book, his past, uh, the future and the scene in general. Um, basically, um, I mean, there's a plethora of cashing books and there has been over the years uh, of cashing books on the on the original punk scene. And it's the same sort of story that's been rehashed over and over again. So for yeah. your books, which are uh, Burning Britain, Trapped in a Scene, The Anarcho Punk, The Day the Country Died, uh, Armed with Anger, and the one I didn't know about, The Thrash Metal on Contract in Blood. And also yeah. this new one, obviously, The Scene that Will Not Die. Um for me, for someone like myself of my generation or our generation, it's like a complete breath of fresh air because that this sort of scene isn't covered in this kind of detail. Um, I'm guessing we are of the same generation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we look to be by the colour of your beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do, do you sort of agree with that? You know, there, there is a plethora of, of those kind of cash-in books. Um, yeah, I, I mean... The whole reason I wrote Burn in Britain in the first place was um, I was writing for Record Collector at the time and I kept getting sent books to rev to review about punk. And basically they were either about the Sex Pistols or the Clash. Um, and that was it. And I, you know, and I, I really, really wanted to see a book about Discharge, GBH, the Exploited, Crass. Um, and, and eventually I just wrote you know, I thought I'm going to have to write it myself, really. You know, there, there's room for these, you know, these books on the pistols and clash, obviously, because they had a huge sort of um, cultural impact. But, you know, just to, you know, endless rehashing of, of the same, you know, information and same pictures and that. Um, yeah. So it wasn't really, you know, scratching the itch that I, you know, that I was feeling at the time. No, I mean, when, when Burning um, Burning Britain came out, for me, it was like, because I think it says in one of your forewords, whether you wrote it or um, James Sherry wrote it in, in this book, it's about um, the fact that we used to go and have to hunt our punk rock down or we used to have to take a punt on a record just on based on the sleeve or what they wrote in sounds, you know, that kind of thing. And then to find all that information all these years later, all in one book, you know, and it's something you take off the shelf and you dip into and dip out of uh, very much with this with this new one as well, this new book as well. Um, amazing reference library. And, um, you know, for, for me, it's like a dream come true in, in that sort of sense. And for a lot of people as well, you know. Um, <laughs> that's, what wanted, that's, I, that's what I wanted to, to create really was, 
like you said, a, re a reference library. Because I think a lot of these bands, you know, I mean, maybe not the likes of GBH and Discharge, you know, but the, the smaller bands like, um, you know, the Septic Psychos and bands like that, you know, eventually people will will forget about them, you know, and I just wanted to, um, you know, immortalise them really, you know, as part of the scene um, and try and immortalise as many of those bands as I could. I mean, you know, they're not, they're not perfect in that there's probably bands missing from each book, but, you know, even if the band isn't in there, it's probably referenced by one of the other bands, you know, yeah. so it, hopefully if you took the, five books because i think contracting blurge you know the thrash metal one that's kind of a slightly separate thing if you take the five punk books hopefully it's a pretty good overview of the last sort of 40 years you know since the 80s and you know people will pick them up in years to come and think oh yeah you know um pizza tram <laughs> google them up you know <laughs> or, or whatever so uh yeah yeah, that's exactly what it is. It, you know, they're not they're not novels to be read from front to back. You know, they're reference books to put by your toilet. <laughs> this song is a bait. Drinking that much. You fucking projectile vomit compared to three of those, man. Which is also what happened last night, isn't it? The research that must have gone in, and I share your frustrations when you said in the book about there's bands that's not in there uh, because they simply haven't got back to you. And I've, I, you know, I've run a little label and done things myself, and you sort of invite bands over. And if I was invited to be on a on a compilation or in a book, it'd be top of my list. And the other bands, they just they don't get back to you, do they? And, no, you know. no, they're um, I, uh, a few, some of the bands it surprised me. Other bands, you know, they're moving on to to bigger things and I you know I guess you know perhaps they just think you know I'm just a, just a fanzine I say just a you know a fanzine writer getting in touch with them with another interview and they're like yeah yeah you know I can't be bothered I can't be bothered um but there were some bands I was quite surprised didn't come back to me mm -hmm. um, and there's even been bands since the, the new books come out where um they were like oh, we thought we were answered a questionnaire for you. <laughs> and uh, they hadn't, you know, they they thought someone else in the band was answering it and, you know, whatever, like a misunderstanding. But s some of the bands I chased two, three, four times over the last 18 months, you know, and just couldn't, couldn't get anything out of them. I mean, very occasionally you'll get a band that's completely up front with you and I just say, I, I can't be asked. I just, <laughs> don't, just don't want to do it. Um, you know, and you think that's fair enough. You know, you can't make someone go in the book. There, there are a few bands in there that, as soon as the book came out, I thought, oh, I didn't put that band in. You know, so yeah, that that's a a bit frustrating for me. You know, and there's a few bands looking back at you know at the the other books, like you know, Burning Britain. I really wanted uh, an interview with with Watty from the Exploited in there. Um, in the, the Anarcho book, I really wanted one with Vice Versa from Poison Girls, you know, mm. and just couldn't make it happen for what, you know, for whatever reason.
with reference to when you said about um, people thinking you're a fanzine, right? You actually did a fanzine. What was it called? Little things, please, little minds. That was it. Yeah, and uh, was that was that like your typical fanzine of the day, the typical Anico kind of? Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. It's just, I mean, it it was. I mean, it was um, just as you know, a Xerox sort of. I don't know, sort of ten sheets folded up, sort of little A five type thing. Um, but I found a few copies the other day and sent them to a, a friend in Belgium who, who, who runs like a fanzine archive. And he posted um, one of the interviews online and it instantly various friends were emailing me, taking the piss out of the quality of the <laughs> questions. <laughs> Those typical sort of fanzine questions that you used to ask in the 80s. But, but these were taken to a new level of bad. I think one of the questions was... Um, you know, have you ever felt like killing yourself? And have you ever done drugs? But then I, for some reason, I just threw in, um, how are you doing money-wise? <laughs> <laughs> I'm amazed they didn't tell me to mind my own business sort of thing. But they, you know, fair play to them, they answered the question. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. But it's uh, it's quite funny. From uh, I noticed in, uh, in in your book, it was sort of mentioned about um, soaping stamps, and you know, and you, you try and organise a tour and, and gigs, and, and we used to have to write letters to, you know, everyone was a pen, was your pen but we didn't even have house phones in those days, you know, that kind of thing. You know, it's, it's sad as it, as strange as it is, you know, and everything was uh, it was a lot of hard work, and it, but it was rewarding in the sense more more rewarding than now in in in, that, in my own opinion, anyway, you know to actually string three or four gigs together in in a band, you know. But. Oh, I mean, it was, you know, we used, used to book European tours. Like you said, I didn't have a phone at my mum and dad's house, so I'd, I'd walk about a mile in the rain to a little call box armed with, you know, bags of 10 peas or two peas, it might have even been, pumping them in, you know, they only lasted a few seconds on the phone to these European promoters. And you'd write and you'd write letters and you you'd have to wait three weeks, you know, for someone to come back and say, we can't do the Thursday, but we can do the Friday. <laughs> you know, all this sort of <laughs> stuff that just happens instantly now. Yeah. Um, but we, you know, we we made it happen. I mean, we would quite often go to Europe and play and, and we didn't have gigs on some of the nights. And we kind of sort gigs and blag onto bills while we were there, you know. Yeah. Um, I haven't got an overly romantic view of that time because it was a, a bit of a nuisance. And I think of some of the things that happen now and, you know, I'm so glad that we've got mobile phones and apps and social media, you know, uh, like when Warwind were in America and, and their van broke down on the way to Chicago. I mean, within, you know, an hour, we, we'd been in touch with the promoter. We put it on air you know, a Facebook page saying, we're not going to make the gig, we're broke down. Um, you know, and all these people are messaging us saying, oh, you know, that, you know, that sucks, but, you know, we understand sort of thing. It, back in the 80s, you just wouldn't have turned up and you'd got a bad name as a band that didn't show. Um, you know, so the flip side of that is, is if you do a really bad gig, it's instantly on YouTube and people are, talking about it, you know, whereas back in, in the 80s, you did a bad gig and it was, you know, it was just the 10 people that were there that knew about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. I was, I was going to talk to you about what, I mean, you've been in so many bands. I've got a list of some of the bands you've got. Um, one with a dreadful name. What was that awful name? <laughs> something about, what was it called? Uh, Son of the Ended Nights or something? Son of, of, yeah, Son of the Endless Nights. Um, Endless Nights. A thrash metal studio project. I'm still yeah. doing that. We're just doing, we just finishing off her second album. The list of bands here, I've got like Decadence Within, Burnside, Flux Pink Indian, Stomping Ground, Suicide Watch, Human Watch as well. Is that Human Watch? Uh, human Error. Human Error, sorry. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Uh, betrayed by Many, Free Base, 36 Strategies. Yeah. Yep. And War Wound. And come back to War Wound, because um, you 
like you said, you toured the States. Now, I tried to, I don't know if you heard, I, I played in a band called Spam Javelin, and we uh, we got uh, as far as Minneapolis Airport last year. Right. Uh, on work, on normal visas, you know, which we were, you know, so many bands had done it, and we got yeah. uh, we got pulled in, they knew everything about us, and kicked us out within 45 minutes, we were back on the plane home, you know. Um really? So how did you do it? Did you have to apply for visas? Did you do it the proper way with War Wound? Or? We, we've, um, I did it three times with War Wound and twice with Stamping Ground. And it was always on um, visitors, visas. Didn't fly in with any guitars, no merch. Yeah. Got everything sorted when we were out there. Mm-hmm. Flew in separately to each other. Um you know, and to me, I, yeah, I know you're bucking the system, but you're not making a penny on this tour no. anyway. So to, no. to to actually sort of declare yourself as working as a professional musician kind of takes the piss a little bit, really. <laughs> you, yeah, you end up losing money. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we've had a few um, close shaves with it, with immigration, you know, and yeah. I mean, they knew us. They knew everything about us, you know. When we I, we made the mistake, we obviously we didn't even take a plectrum, but we uh, we travelled together, the three of us. So it looked a bit suspicious, anyway. I guess you know, in that sort of sense. Yeah. They knew everything. They knew they were waiting for us when we turned up there, you know. Oh really? Um, but, yeah. I mean, uh, we probably the closest we had was we flew into um, Houston, um, and we did a, we did like a ten day tour, but one of the gigs was this big punk festival in Houston, I can't remember what it's called, the Badass Weekend it was called, and of course Rat, the, the war wound singer, is quite a, quite a well-known character. He is, yeah. I mean, you've only got to Google him up and instantly there was footage of him playing in war wound, pictures of him playing in war wound, flyers for the American gigs, you know, it was, you know, that is, that, that is a, a shortcoming of the you know social media and the instant access accessibility of information and stuff like that um yeah so but somehow we, we always made it in so yeah. you know we, we we had a few close few close shades i mean when the first time stamping ground went we had um bags just jammed full of stamping ground t-shirts yeah you know and we were like yeah we're just here to see some friends they're all presents for them <laughs> Going back, going back to your book now, the, the scene that would not die. Great picture on the front of Alice from uh, um, what they call it, in Evil Hour, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, was it interesting to read that? To, although they're from Darlington, their first gig was at the Tivoli in Buckley in North Wales, which is yeah, yeah. my stomping ground sort of thing. Just, oh, I went to the Tivoli in um, Buckley. I used to hike up there, not hike. I used to trek up there from, I lived down in Herefordshire. Mm-hmm. And, um, and one gig I went to up there was... Biohazard, Dog Eat Dog, and Dame Set, perhaps, or something like that. Okay. Um, but there was a big set to between Biohazard's road crew and, and the Tivoli's security. They had, big, <laughs> they had a big standoff on stage because the security okay. threw one, one of the audience out for stage diving or something. The band stopped playing, so they, they weren't going to start playing until they let this kid back in again. Right. And there was a bit of a Mexican standoff on the stage. <laughs> that's, <laughs> like, that's what I think of when I think of the Tivoli. <laughs> Did they let him back in? 
They did, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, good. The, the band sort of um, it was a triumph for the band, really. They got got their own way. They sort of said, look, you know, there's 400 people in here. They're going to kick off if we don't play any more songs. Yeah. So you're going to have to them back in. Yeah, fair so, do. Uh, I don't think the security were particularly enamoured with them. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, looking at other, other bands, you know, there's so many bands and you've got, I think, is it, is it 111 bands you featured in this book? I yeah, so. I was going to go for 100. Um, yeah. Going for 100 and somehow I ended up going slightly over. <laughs> so yeah. then my CD was <laughs> kicking in like, yeah. um, but I thought 111 sounded quite a, a good number. Yeah. But you mentioned the picture of Alice on the front. I mean, I was looking at the images. I shortlisted about a dozen images. Um, and and that one was just perfect. It was always, you know, it's it's a relatively new picture, but it feels iconic as soon as you look at it. Yeah. And um, you know, and and just the fact that she's got like a sort of gender is over sticker and a no sweat t-shirt on and all that sort of stuff just to me showcase some of the positive you know things going on in the scene at the moment yeah yeah i was determined to have a girl on the front cover of this one because you know it's all it's been pretty male dominated covers until now yeah it has been well it's it has been a male dominated scene uh, quite a lot although it's it is good to to see the, the, you know, the diversity coming through as well, especially of late, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely, most definitely. This is the reality of your racism. This is the reality of your ignorance! You beat the fucking Um, I've got a couple of questions from uh, people who've already, you know, friends of mine who've already bought the book now. And um, what should I start off with? I'll start with Gary Davis, okay? Uh, he's saying, um, is Zero Again's 7-inch uh, available in the UK or do you have to buy it from the Polish label? Oh, right, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so Zero Again's the, the band I'm doing at the moment remembers a grand collapse and regret and bring to ruin. And the seven inch that he's talking about is called um, Out of the Crooked Timber of Humanity. It's coming out on Sanctus Propaganda. soon as we know when we're getting them we'll put a pre-order link up so it will be available in the uk so if gary keeps an eye on the zero again page in fact if he wants to drop us a message on the zero again page and they you know we'll put one to one side for him. <laughs> <laughs> right okay, you put two aside i'll, I'll take one as well yeah. <laughs> uh, he's he's also asking any new bands that you recommend it's putting you on the spot really i know but yeah i mean it, yeah. there's there's loads of, of good new bands, but the one that I'm um, really into at the moment is a band called Blind Eye. Um, and it's Andrew from Endless Grinning Skulls. I think okay. he's been in other bands like Bloody Head and stuff like that. Um, I'm really quite taken with that that Blind Eye demo on Bandcamp. Check, check that out, check that out okay. for sure. And I will do that. And also, he's being a bit greedy here. He's also his uh, favourite release you've played on. Oh, that's, 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 I mean, I'm very partial to that last War Wound album we did, World War Three, yeah. well, W3, as in War Wound Three. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the most recent album I've done. 
Um, I was really pleased how that came out. I think probably the album that has, has had the biggest impact was maybe Car From Empty Words by Stamping Ground. The third okay. Stamping Ground album, I was very proud of that. Um, but I think probably my favourite, and I'm being greedy now by just listing loads, <laughs> but um, maybe the first Decadence Within 7-inch Speed Hippie, because it was the first one, you know. Yeah, I like, remember that. I do, yeah dream come true to have a piece of vinyl in your hand that you you know you'd written and recorded and stuff yeah so I, i'd say that one it certainly isn't the best but it you know probably the one closest to my heart sort of thing a question from rich phillips there's only two more questions right, yeah. no, i don't mind rich, okay <laughs> i'm here all day yeah rich says do you think the diy that diy punk as we know and love it will shine on or even flourish in the current climate with or after the current climate uh, with venues closing already uh, or already shut uh, some bands will struggle to continue yet historically at this time with extreme politics and feelings of division and inequality is it usually turns out to be that you have great material from new bands does that make sense yeah, yeah it definitely does i mean um you know no one's been able to play any gigs since march and I think a lot of bands have been writing like mad. I know certainly, you know, with the new band Zero again, I mean, we we roughed up dozens of songs and lyrics, you know, every time you turn the TV on, there was inspiration for another yeah. song lyrically. So I think, you know, it is a fertile time, you know, creative time for punk, unfortunately, mm. because like, you know, like he said, it's... Um, you know, there's just so much division and it really feels like, um, it really feels like, uh, you know, that people are drawing up sides in, the, in the, the country and stuff like that. And it, you know, it feels like it could be a volatile time ahead, you know, and then you throw in like a pandemic and all the other sort of good stuff going on at the moment. Um, you know, as far as venues go, I don't think anything can suppress the DIY punk scene because it just finds a way to happen. Um, so I do, you know, even if there isn't venues, I think, you know, there'll be like basement shows and, yeah, you know, in gigs in people's garages and mm -hmm. back, backyard barbecue kind of parties and stuff like that, you know, so if there was no venues to play, I think people will play anyway. Um, yeah, you know, when, when we were in America with Warwind, I mean, every other gig, you know, one would be in a club, but the next would be in someone's basement. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, perhaps that's what will happen in this country. But I mean, there's a, a lot of really great venues and I know they're hurting at the moment. You know, um, Temple of Boom in Leeds and, you know, all these great venues and they're coming up with like in the innovative ways of staying afloat selling merch and you know and stuff like that so hopefully they can weather the storm you know and, and maybe we can get back to gigs next summer or something yeah um, hopefully you know and i think people will you know as soon as there is a gig booked hopefully people will turn out for it you know yeah. in droves you know because they're so desperate to see live music yeah <laughs> I've got a final question here from Mark Watson Jones. Uh, he plays in a band called The Mysteries of Sin here up here in North Wales. Um, oh yeah, um, yeah. He, he didn't think they were in the book, but they did get a mention, didn't they? <laughs> they did, yes. <laughs> and uh, he's also he, he promotes lots of gigs as well up here. And has a, he's a big, um, a, a major force in the scene up here in North Wales. 
as small as it is, but uh, very active. Uh, he says, in spite of nostalgia, do you think punk might now be a more focused and effective political and social force than it used to be? I think it's always had that. There's always been a faction that, you know, that, that have got something to say. You know, certainly the, certainly the new band I'm doing, you know, where, you know, the band's got a lot to say. Every song has got a specific meaning. Um, but I think you are also going to get the, you know, the bands that will just jump up on stage and trot out, you know, the hits for the people that want to hear them, as it were. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess... Yes, I think I think there's going to be um, like a hardcore of punk that you know that is politically active, politically astute, and then I think unfortunately, you know, you're always going to get those people that are virtually apolitical. They don't really care, mm-hmm. um, and I think we we talked about it earlier that how divided the country is, you know, and people taking sides. I don't. I don't think you can really sit on the fence anymore. You know, you you're either, you know, for decency or you're against it. I I'd like to see punk become a much more um, you know, political vehicle. I, I don't see how it can't be. You know, virtually every decision you make these days, you know, is influenced by politics, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and a, a missile is a sin. You know, if we do a if we do a volume two of this book, I'll I'll get them in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so wrapping up then. Um, thank you so much for bringing this out. So thank you so much for all the other books as well. Hope it does really well for you. Uh, any final thoughts? Any final things? Well, thanks thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I don't take this sort of stuff for granted. You know, thanks to everybody that that picked the book up. Um, Apologies to the bands that aren't in there. <laughs> yeah, mine included. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I did draw up a list of 250 bands, but we were looking at, um, we were looking at a page count of like over a thousand pages. It would have yeah. just been ridiculous to ship and the cost would have been, we made it about as big as it possibly could be without it being so big that it falls apart when you try and read it. But just, you know, thanks for, Thanks for the support. Check out, check out the new band, check out Zero again. But, you know, most importantly, check out, you know, some of the bands in the book, some of the bands that aren't in the book. You know, keep your local venues alive somehow through this period, um, you know, so we can, we can pick up where we left off, hopefully, yep. in 2021. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yeah, cheers, Neil. Thanks, cheers, mate. Cheers, Take care. Bye. All right. Bye. See you. Bye-bye.